so in this video I'm going to be talking about engine oil systems uh, we have two major systems that are being used for uh, piston engines which is a dry sump and the wet sump so I'm going to be talking about dry sump is simply a lubricating oil management design for piston engines which uses uh, an external or secondary reservoir to store oil before the oil is being you know or pushed into the system to lubricate the system and to cool the system whereby the oil is at the bottom of the case of the engine and then from there a scavenge pump pulls out the oil you know pumps out the oil from the crankcase to an external reservoir which is in which is referred to as a tank this is where the oil stays and then from this point another pump uh, a pressure pump pumps the oil out from the uh, from the tank through the filter and through other mechanisms through around the engine to the all the, the the bearings and all the points and all lubrication and cooling so in this system we have two major pumps which is the scavenge pump and the pressure pump so uh, you you will see that in this system that the the level where the oil is is actually low so for the dry sump system the 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 oil sump pan which is a, a, the sump is usually lower uh, you know compared to that of the wet sump you see the wet sump later so what are the advantages of the of dry sump the major advantages are one that uh, because the we have an external tank so we are able to store more oil in the system so it's a large quantity of oil is used which is better for heat absorption of course one of the properties or one of the uh, things that the oil does in the system aside from just lubricating is also cooling the system so it absorbs heat from the from the engine so it helps to also cool the system so when you have larger quantity of oil the absorption rate is going to be high so that is an advantage for the dry sump system and a more balanced engine because of lower center of gravity the position of the center of gravity of an object affects the stability the lower the center of gravity which is g is the more stable the object the higher it is the more likely the object is to topple over if it is pushed of course you understand this in uh big uh, big trucks and then you no know, smaller cars you see that most racing cars are actually made to be very small and you know, almost close to the ground that helps to lower the center of gravity and because the center of gravity is lowered it is difficult for that kind of car to top let me show you look at this case now we have the center of gravity of the yellow car which is quite smaller it doesn't topple over even if it goes through cornering high you know, sharp cornering and all of that it is difficult to, to topple or less I mean in extreme cases whereby a car that has a higher center of gravity which is you know further from the from the ground it is easier for that car to topple so that is an advantage for the for the dry sump system you see that the oil tank is separate from the crankcase and for that reason the engine can be brought lower this the center of gravity can be brought lower for that particular car and then the engine is going to have more balancing because where the engine where the crank is is you know can be differentiated for where the oil is so even if you have a larger quantity of oil you can now balance the weight on both sides so making the engine more stable so that is a very big advantage now we have the it also there is less slushing due to baffles in the reservoir the reservoirs where where this oil is usually has a baffles baffles we know is you know it helps to reduce that effect of slushing so that maybe when the car is undergoing you know going through a corner or going through a rough road potholes and that the oil you know if it doesn't if the tank doesn't have baffles the oil has a tendency to slush to move all around just as the car is moving irrespective of the car having a suspension system even though it has you know it's still going to affect when it enters the pothole or is undergoing a coronary so the baffle helps to reduce that that, that uh, effect of slushing so that is also a very good advantage so you have to contain the oil and then it also has a sustained oil pressure even during coronary now you understand this when you learn more about the wet sump system because during cornering the the oil seems to move to one side of the engine 
you know because if you're moving towards the left for example the oil could go towards the right and if you're moving towards the right the oil could go towards the left and no such can happen but, but in the dry system because you have a scavenge pump it ensures that even if the oil is moving from one side to the other that there is a continuous draw of oil at the given pressure so it helps to maintain the pressure of the oil whereby in a way some when the oil moves to one side if the pump is not located in that side of course you agree with me even though if it's for the slightest minutes or slightest seconds there's going to be a little drop in oil pressure in a dry system, a, a, a dry sump system, it doesn't matter if that happens or not. Since the oil is in the bar, in, is in a separate tank, and since there is a scavenge pump that always pulls out the oil from the crankcase into that into that tank, and also there's another pump which is a pressure pump that ensures that there's a continuous sustained pressure from that tank to the engine. So even if you undergo cornering, you enter potholes, you move at a high speed or whatever thing happens to the car, it ensures, that pump ensures that the pressure is sustained. So this system is more efficient, though it's not common. But because this system is not common, it is also important to understand that it is expensive because if you look at the scavenge pump here, you see this is a unit on its own. But when you see, when we talk about the wet sump, you see that it doesn't have that. And for that reason, this extra uh, devices that have been added to it makes the, the engine more, you know, more expensive and really very, very effective and efficient. Now let's talk about the wet sump. The wet sump is simply a lubricating oil management design for piston engine uh, which uses a crankcase as a built-in reservoir for oil, you know, as opposed to the to the external and you know, secondary reservoir used in the dry sump design. So for the wet sump, the, uh, the reservoir is actually in the crankcase itself. So at the, at the bottom of the crankcase, that is where the, the oil sump is. Look at this typical example of what it looks like. You see the connecting rod, the splash, the splashing scoop, and then the oil sump. That point below, where it's marked orange, is where is what is called the oil sump. In this case, it doesn't have an external tank, so all the oil are contained there. And for that reason, you know, you you, uh, you see that the uh, the crankshaft is a bit higher. You know, it's not very close to the bottom because there has to be space for oil to be to be stored. So in other words, in this case, you can't compare the center of gravity for the wet sump system to that of the dry sump system. Design uh, where the, the, the oil is at the bottom and then it's being moved out by a pump to the through a filter and to the lubricating point. Now, this is a typical design maybe for cars, but for small engines like two-stroke engines, small two-stroke engines, generators and all of that that use this kind of design, they might not have pump, not all of them have pump. So some is just... Uh, this scoop, it just has a splashing scoop to move, you know, pick the oil and throw it up around the engine, around the cylinder walls. But for other car, like cars, they have a pump that moves the oil and then moves them to the required point. Now, this system, the advantage is that it is cheaper to build. I mean, you already understand, if you understand the first one, you should understand that this is cheaper to build because this requires only just one pump, and in most cases, in some cases, even it doesn't require a pump. But for the dry system, it requires not less than two pumps. So it's cheaper to build, less weight, no extra pump and additional oil. And then less complex in design. It's a simple design, straightforward. And then less oil because you know, we don't have an external reservoir to store the oil. So the, all, all the oil that we have has to be in the crankcase. And, you know, and because of the design and the capacity of the engine, the oil might not take as much as that of the dry sump system quick oil warm-up due to less oil because the oil in the system is not that much so it is easier for it to get warmed up immediately when you start the engine compared to that of the dry sump where there's a lot of oil and the reservoir it will take time for it to warm up compared but though given technology and advancement in engines all those don't actually uh, deter the effectiveness and efficiency of the dry system but for the wet system it's a great advantage so this is just the the oil sump just decided to talk about it also this is the way it looks like and then we have the drain boat yeah if you want to drain the oil you want to change oil you have the drain plug or drain boat sometimes it's called drain, uh, drain boat also you simply locate it at the bottom of the engine when you open it the oil is going to come out for 
changing now we have the dream boat i want to talk about this dream boat you see that there's a, a, a different part a, a different part in the boat that has a different color that is supposed to be the magnet so this helps you to you know to also monitor your engine when you are changing oil you get to know if the engine there's a fault in the engine if there's a broken bearing or something anything that happens with the engine that there happens to be a metal shavings at the end of the boat such as this this uh, you know helps you to know that okay there is an issue somewhere either there's a broken bearing or you know something has happened somewhere which you need to check take to your to your technician or whoever checks your car or if you do it yourself then you know that there is an issue and then you have to diagnose and find out the issue so thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more thank you